Hi, let's talk about the energy in simple harmonic motion. Here is a graph given by the textbook showing you how the energy would change over the displacement. You can also call it the position. And so you can see that the kinetic energy and potential energy, uh, the sum, the total of them is going to be constant because they transform from one to another. And it, it kind of makes sense. But then if you try to refer back to the simulation of the spring mass system that we did earlier, something is wrong. Can you identify what it is? Okay, the answer is because this graph is only referring to the horizontal spring mass system, which is way earlier here. Okay, so uh, this one you can kind of like see like the simulation that we did in rotate with 90 degrees. So it will still go back and forth like this, all right, and then it is an exaction motion, uh, but then in our simulation, because we are doing it in a vertical direction, then obviously it will involve more than two kinds of energy. And that is obviously the gravitational potential energy as well. So not just the elastic potential. So the one that you can see here, uh, it is actually referring to elastic potential because I mean, that, that's the potential energy that you have when you are doing horizontally. There's no gravitational potential energy at all. But then when you do it vertically, then you actually have three kinds of energies. So for the graph, then it should not look like that. So my question is, how should it look like? Before I ask you to think of the graph of the vertical spring mass system, I would like to explain more about the horizontal one first and maybe show you how we can derive such a graph. So first of all, uh, we have to understand that the total energy should be constant because there's no energy lost because there's no friction, right? So obviously because of this, when you first set up the spring, when you first start to pull it, because when you want the system to move, then of course you have to do the initial displacement by pulling it or compressing it and then you release, right? So that motion, you already have input the energy, the total energy to the system already. And that is exactly the maximum elastic potential energy that you have. So that's why at the beginning, maybe I can erase this a bit first, then that will be the maximum at this point of the elastic potential energy before you released. And so that of course will be that point. And I mean, similarly in the opposite uh, like place, when this is the most compressed, then it is also the same amount of elastic potential energy and when you have no velocity. So that's why the kinetic energy will be zero at the two end. So the problem is how do we know it's a curve? Why can't we do like a straight line like this? I mean, that, that's a problem, right? So for this, we can refer back to the energy equation about elastic potential. So for the elastic potential, if you recall what you learned in chapter two, that's half k x squared. So x is the extension. So that's why obviously this is a quadratic equation simply, right? With origin as the point of symmetry. And so once you get the blue curve, the potential energy of elastic potential energy, then uh, what you have to do is just the simple way is to do the minus using the total minus the elastic potential, then you can obtain the red line for representing the kinetic energy. So this is how you can obtain the graph for a horizontal uh, simple harmonic motion of a spring mass system. So for now, I would like you to obtain the graph of energy against displacement for the vertical spring mass system in simple harmonic motion. You should include, of course, total energy, kinetic energy, elastic potential energy, and gravitational potential energy. Pause the video now and try it yourself. 
2,000 years later. Oh well, oh well, it's harder than I thought. So it took me more like more than one hour probably to figure it out. So because I don't want to make it wrong, so I, I double check everything carefully. So this is a diagram that you obtain eventually, and because it's quite complicated, so I would like to include the explanation like on how we can derive all this in another video. So yeah, if you like, you can take reference to it. And if you want to know more about the detailed explanation, which I hope you do, uh, watch the next video. I don't want to scare you. Honestly, this is not on the syllabus. So if you cannot understand that, I guess it's fine. But then uh, just to share the joy of learning physics, uh, understanding physics, I think uh, trying to prove general equation like this is always the best part in physics and it's always satisfying when you try to get you know the pattern and you try to see the world in a more general way so if you are worrying about up to like what standard you have to understand then you could just refer back to this diagram that we talked about earlier and that will be good enough for uh, you know coping with the IB exam but I always hope you can understand that learning physics is not just for exam, it's more about appreciating our physical world. Okay, so for now, I would like you to try out this question. So pause the video now and try it out first. A few moments later. Okay, so we have got a graph of kinetic energy versus displacement, and we have got the mass, and this is SHM. The first question is asking us the total energy. So as you know, the total energy remain a constant throughout. And so in that case, we just have to look at when KD is maximum, then potential energy is at minimum, at zero more precisely. So the answer is simply XT then, XT millijoule. Number two, maximum speed. Again, maximum speed is when you have maximum kinetic energy. So that means KE max equal to XT mini joule so that's going to be xt times 10 to the power negative 3 equals to half mv squared so allow me to do it more quickly then you should be able to solve v to be 0 0.632455 and run it to 2 and 6.3 meter per second Part three, amplitude of the motion. Amplitude of the motion just, I mean, when KD is zero, right, this is zero, that means it's not moving, not, not really moving, it's not having speed. So that is simply the two side of your motion. So um, that's the amplitude, so four CM simply, you don't even have to calculate anything. Okay, potential energy when displacement is at two CM. So let's take a look here. At 2 cm, you have 60 mini joule for kg. So, as you know, xt is the total. Then that means xt minus 60. That means 20 mini joule will be the amount for potential energy. And lastly, it asks you to draw the variation of potential energy. I'll, I'll just draw it on the same graph. So again, since you know the total is going to be a horizontal line, then what you have to do is just to find out you know the reverse of kinetic energy basically so it's like the total minus the kinetic so that's going to be like an inverse curve like this oh wait but then i think i can do better because when you hit 40 this is when you have when you have the ke and pd to be like the same value so it should curve like this and then hit XT so I think that's something you want to ensure well I didn't draw very smoothly but then if you can draw it on the paper I think you can do better than me but I guess this is one kind of technique that you want to not really technique but just to be more cautious about there are certain points that you want to pass through when you draw a line 
Okay, so that's all in this video and you have learned the energy in simple harmonic motion. So once again, you can rely on this diagram uh, on describing how the energy interchange. So the Ke transform to Pe and back to Ke again and maintaining the total energy constant because there's no energy lost in SHM. And so in case you are interested in the vertical spring mass system energy, then go to check out the next video. It is painful, but you'll find it beautiful afterwards. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.